Born as Peter, Katie Cornhill knew since childhood that she wanted to be a girl. But she hid her true feelings from her friends and colleagues for many years, until she decided to go through with a surgical intervention. My transition, you could say, started the day I was conceived. Um, so it's been a whole journey for my whole life. Um, transition can happen in several ways, uh, or a few ways. Um, basically, the main way that people transition is, is, is socially. So that's your biggest challenge when you socially transition. Um, then you can go for medical transition as well, which involves taking drugs for your transition and surgical intervention as well. And I had my gender confirmation surgery in November last year. How did that feel? Uh, amazing, if I'm honest. Uh, something that I should have done many, many years ago, but I just haven't been in the right space in my life, uh, the right support around me, um, the, the, right, the right environment, really, for me to feel confident um, and able to be able to do what I know I needed to do and align myself with my entire body, head, everything, all at once. I was married, I separated, not because of my gender identity, um, but I got to a stage in my life where I started to realise that not being myself was impacting on me personally on a personal level and a professional level. So at work I just wasn't feeling like I was fitting in properly. I felt quite isolated in a team of what are white heterosexual men, um, which is 95% of the fire and rescue service. At the time I was obviously living as a male in a male, a male identity because I had to live in a male identity to keep myself safe um, and I did that to keep a safe blanket, safety blanket around me and my colleagues to a degree as well. Um, I feared the reaction of people internally for me and for my team um, but also externally I feared for the fire and rescue service, for my team, my colleagues, my friends what people might say about the fire and rescue service who were supporting someone who was transgender. I would go home at night time and often reflect on the day and knowing that I, I partook in conversations at work about um, what did you get up to at the weekend with your wife um, knowing that actually um, I'm, not, I'm not in a relationship at the moment you know and I couldn't really tell people how I really felt so I, I felt isolated um, from that as well. Uh, and I used to remove myself from normal conversations that you would have around a mess table or in an office environment where I just couldn't talk to people and be open and honest. The macho environment in the fire station is not the easiest place to come out. But Katie was brave enough to talk about her transition plans with a line manager and received vital support from her team. After I told my line manager, I went on to discuss with him how I would transition. And what I wanted to do was very, be very open, be very honest, be very transparent with my team that I worked with, because I realized that although it was my personal journey that I was going on, this was gonna be a journey that involved everybody. Um, and I, th I saw it as an opportunity for everybody to learn about someone who transitions and they were all very pleasantly um, comforting to me they reassured me no don't worry about it it's new to us and we'll deal with it as we go I was very um, open for them uh, asking me questions and I got lots of questions initially uh, but all in all the support I got from my line manager my um, team that I was working with at the time my equalities management and team up at our headquarters and the corporate support that I got was absolutely amazing. Katie now uses her personal history to raise awareness about transgender issues and to fight the flames of exclusion and discrimination. I'm really proud at the moment to be on the board of trustees for Stonewall UK and I'm also a school role model for Stonewall. So I go into schools on a regular basis and talk to assemblies um, groups of children, up to four or five hundred children at once, to talk to them about inclusion in general, but uh, specifically about lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender inclusion, because that's what Stonewall UK, the charity, represents. When I do my job, all I want to do is be competent and efficient and effective at what I do. That's why it's really important for workplaces in any context, be it a public service, 
be a private sector organisation, the happier that individual is and that the support that you get from the workplace, the more efficient your service delivery is to the public that we serve or you know, to any organisation that is in either a, a third sector organisation, sorry, charity environment where they're helping individuals, from a public service point of view where we're making lives safer, or um, to a commercial organisation that wants to make some profit from the people that they help. Nicole Ries for that Solent.